what is up my ninjas i am strident and welcome to another video today we are looking at marvel legends x-men figures that i've picked up over the last couple months we're going to be looking at the ones that uh i recently picked up which starts with forge then uh bishop gambit and then lastly we'll be looking at jubilee uh, i've been meaning to do this for a while so let's just jump right into it so initially I was going to do individual reviews for each of those figures that I've mentioned so far. And then I was like, you know, they're Marvel Legends. They're really not that different, uh, not different enough that I need to, you know, separate this. And I could actually just talk about all of them together, especially because the X-Men are kind of one of those things that we've been waiting for for a long time. I still have characters to get and, you know, seeing them together is what kind of helps because we've been reading about them together as a unit as one of the most famous teams in comics so it's a big deal to see them put together finally you know so we're getting closer so i have a whole lot to talk about because like i was saying uh i probably said it in other videos or said it on facebook i've been struggling to get these guys together it's one of those things because in my area for whatever reason i'm not seeing shit like i'm still rocking with this old professor x because I think I've seen the Legendary Riders uh, Professor X once. <laughs> Beast, same way, and, but I don't care. I'm sticking with the Beast I got. But this Professor X is still the bomb. That plastic uh, wheelchair and everything. Um, I love it. And I love the way Toy Biz went the extra mile by making him not able to use his legs. That just, man, that's just dope. Um, but yeah. So if, if, if anyone sees the Legendary Riders version, pick up an extra one, let me know, and I will hit you up on, uh, hit you back with some PayPal money and get you uh, settled up. Because, yeah, I'm looking for him, and it's really hard to find him. But, uh, yeah, he's doing the job right now. I don't really have too much, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't really have that much else to say about him, except for the fact that, like, Patrick Stewart, I mean, like, who else was going to play Professor X? It's probably the one thing they got perfectly correct the first time even though he doesn't have the crazy eyebrows you know but uh i dig this figure i dig it a lot and like i said earlier uh excuse me the everything but the wheelchair is perfect i mean the wheelchair makes sense because at least if he's going up against magneto he can't throw him out of the chair or something like that you know what i mean because it's a plastic chair it's something i'm surprised didn't pop up in the comics you know like some kind of alloy that's not uh magnetic you know that's not uh it doesn't react to magnetic fields and such i mean i don't know what that would be but you know it is marvel comics they could always come up with something but like i said earlier the thing that always amazes me is his legs i mean <laughs> it's just ridiculous like in the best way like he can't use his legs because he's paralyzed he, he doesn't have the use of his legs so they gave him these wobbly ass legs that you just can't do anything with other than have him sit in the wheelchair and that is just genius these days they would have just given us a and they probably did just give us a figure uh paint him in the suit you know make the suit the right color and he's still you know uh, uh, pretty much a, a fully functioning figure complete with legs that actually have the proper tolerances to work but uh yeah man they i love it um i think we will start though with we should start with bishop right because bishop i got bishop a long time ago and uh, i mean it wasn't really a long time ago but i got him well before forge and jubilee so let's let's talk about bishop i think we'll, we'll start with him all right bishop uh, one of my favorite X-Men, big, tough, from the future, uh, carries a shotgun, like a futuristic shotgun. Um, dude could take down many of the X-Men members because he was pretty much trained based on things that they did, legendary feats that they did. Um, they did a good job with this figure. I mean, he's not perfect. Um, you know, the look is cool. His neck is weird, but the, the handkerchief or whatever, it kind of covers up some of that stuff. Um, but they got the decals right on his shoulders. They got, uh, you know, the boots look like what they what they mostly looked like in the comics. I mean, these aren't sculpted. These are just uh, cast in that color. He doesn't have all the detail that the other uh, version had, the original version. Um, 
there's little issues with him but he's still a very fun figure which is really weird and I like that they made him the right size as you can see him compared to Cyclops and then you'll see him compared to Wolverine um, he's big and he's supposed to be big he's supposed to be a head and sh about a head and shoulders taller than Cyclops and uh, or about a head taller than Cyclops and a head and shoulders taller than Wolverine which works you know because that's exactly what he was especially when Jim Lee was drawing him and also when John Romita Jr. was drawing him so it's one of those things but uh yeah he's pretty simple I mean most of the details on this figure are all painted the uh, uh like his legs fit in properly it's like they actually sculpted things correctly um the stripe works I don't like the fact that like his knees kind of slightly point inward that shouldn't be you can see it on the other leg it's not like that but on the the leg with the uh Jesus I don't know why I just hit the mic like that on the leg with the stripe on it you have that problem you still have the issue with parts being sculpted and just you know kind of pushed on like on his uh, uh sleeves also the holster for his shotgun doesn't actually like sit straight it kind of moves on its own based on the weight of the gun they should have had it connected at the bottom portion of it to the belt and then it would have stayed straight but unfortunately it's not connected to the belt I guess you could glue it if you wanted but once again you paid money for this you shouldn't have to but uh you know it would have made so much more sense for them to do that you saw where I was just pointing that's where it needs to connect for it to stay straight and I think in the comics the harness and the belt were connected um, at least the way Jim Lee and John Romita drew them um, I want to show you how he looks holding the the rifle because one of the things I noticed in a lot of the reviews is that people were complaining and saying they have trouble making him hold his gun and it's like you just have to force his hands open and once you do it like once or twice his hand will receive the pump portion of the shotgun with no problem and then he can actually pose holding the gun the right way this is one of those things that I hate when I'm watching reviews where you know they're they're gonna pull the figure apart but they're too afraid to actually like force a gun in their hands with a Marvel legend nonetheless you know figures that will not fall apart so um, you know I'm gonna get that done for you guys so you guys can see it sorry it's taking so long it's one of those things um, <clears throat> takes a little bit of finagling and there it is so as you can see he can shoulder the rifle the right way um, it looks good the rifle itself has some nice detail on it I mean it's not like mind-blowing detail but it's accurate enough it feels like some version of the shotgun that you've seen either in the cartoon or in the comics and I mean it looks big and powerful and it doesn't look like something that just anybody could use um, like I said about his hands you are gonna have to force the pump portion into his other hand in order for him to actually support you know the the gun properly but uh you know once you get that oh get the hand open it's real easy to get him holding it and it looks right and he has the support hand and and everything um but once again he on his wrists i forgot to mention he has bands that are similar to the bands on cyclops's wrists and on his thighs and actually on his boots they're separate pieces and they kind of droop down unless you glue them in place you'd think they would have just sculpted the gloves on so this cheap approach kind of frustrates me because you know back in the day toy biz would have sculpted all of that so you know they i guess you can take marks away for that i don't really expect that much when it comes to the comic book figures um i wish that they would sculpt more you know the original one had like knee pads and boots with straps and and armor on it and stuff like biker boots and stuff um, but this is more, I guess, accurate to the comics. They just didn't do anything to push the design, you know, so that you can be like, oh, I get what this is. I know why it's like this, you know, and that frustrates me. But overall, though, everything else, like the pouches and everything else, that looks good. And uh, you can get him in some thorough uh, poses with no problems, even though he's using, you know, the Hyperion buck for his... Uh, for his chest it's either the hyperion bug it looks like hyperion because he has the weird neck um someone can correct me in the comments i really at this point i don't care i just have you know bishop and he's the right 
scale for you know who the character is i know someone in the comments will be like actually you know so go ahead and get your your well actually get that out you know get out of your system and let me know you know what body type that or body piece that is because i refuse to buy the hyperion figure or the sentry or any of the others so i really don't know if it is and i didn't even bother to compare him to who do i have that still has that body i think uh we have Radioactive Man, and I think he has that body, too. So, but it's a good-looking figure. Pouches, guns, or gun, I'm sorry. Um, he should have had effect parts for his hands, since his power is absorb and reflect. Um, he doesn't have any effect parts at all. And that's that's kind of a fail, in my opinion. Because, I mean, you know, with, with mutants, with X-Men, you need to have the mutant power pieces on them. But, uh... You know, the paint is pretty good besides those straps that like to fall back because you can see the brown on the upper portion of the wrist. It should be covered up, but because it's not, I didn't glue these in place yet. It's going to slide down every time I pose him, which sucks. So I'm going to have to glue it forward. Um, the neck kerchief is not so bad. It actually covers up one of the big issues with this guy and I like it. So I don't know. Props to them for what they managed to pull off with uh, Bishop. He's pretty dope. Um, let's look at Forge. Uh, Forge, I just kind of, I forgot that they even did Forge. And then I saw him while we were in Jersey. And I was like, you know what? It's time to pick this dude up. So I have Forge now. Um, I found him at an FYE. And I actually think I paid a little bit too much for him. Um, I think he was like 20 something, 22 or 24 bucks, something like that. He's the price that they were saying Marvel Legends were going to get to. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Outside of uh, movie Marvel Legends, there's no reason to pay that much. But uh, I'll give them the props for this design. This is a classic design. They didn't really change much. They didn't really cheap out the in, in you know giving us the look. But if you look closely, especially at his legs, you can tell there's some issues like the thigh the cybernetic thigh doesn't match his regular thigh you can see at the knees it's like a completely different uh figure and then they kind of forced these lower legs into that thigh and it just looks weird um but i mean for those most people collecting them they just want some version of the figure of the character in their collection so you know this will do the point do the job for you but if you look closely you can see there's a huge gap between his, you know, upper thigh and his lower calf, and it just doesn't look right at all. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a nitpick, but it's one of those weird things where you can see on the other leg how his leg is supposed to look. You look at the other one, and it's like, who put this together? Like, were they blind? I mean, what was the issue with this? You know, did they have no tactile sense at all? Did they, do they don't not understand the concept of, you know? proportion and uh, uh, sitting flush things like that like it just doesn't make sense but you know it is Hasbro it is comic book Marvel Legends they kind of cheap out you can tell that's probably uh, bone breakers leg or thigh and then they just combined it with you know Bucky cap legs and on him he has uh, let's see the belt is a separate piece the tassels on his boots are a separate piece, and the holster on his leg is a separate piece. Thankfully, the tassel on his head is not a separate piece. So props to them for that part. At least they sculpted something, and that, that makes me happy. Also, the, the like bandolier. It's not even a bandolier. The shoulder harness rig thingamabob that he's wearing, that's also a separate piece. Um, but overall... It's all about the paint, and the paint on him is pretty accurate, and nice and clean, which is surprising because they usually do the shittiest paint you can imagine. Um, and then other than that, it looks the part. I don't have any issues. I thought I was surprised because I was thinking that, you know, I was going to find slop all over the place. But, you know, I've been looking over this figure for a minute since I got him, and I haven't had any issues. Um, he comes with two accessories. Uh, I guess you could say three if you count the holster for his pistol, but he has a pistol and he has a uh, assault rifle, a futuristic assault rifle, because you know Forge's mutant power is to create, 
So essentially, he can create and improve on just about anything, and his guns are never standard guns. They're always guns that are, you know, souped up. And kind of like Bishop, you have to force the pump on this gun, this rifle, into his other hand to open up those fingers. And once you do that, it's no problem. But, you know, again, as I was doing that, I was reminded that those pieces are not connected and you're going to have to glue them if you want them to stay and not fall down while you play with the figure or not fall down if your room gets hot or just not fall down, period, which makes no sense. Just sculpt them on or, you know, bond them at the freaking factory. We shouldn't have to do all that. So, you know, I'm not really I'm not happy with that part, but I am happy with the rest of the figure. Um, you know, he's got some of the same issues that Bishop had and Cyclops and Rogue, but uh, I think it's a dope figure nonetheless. He can shoulder the rifle the right way, which is another thing that I said uh, with Bishop that I didn't see in a lot of the reviews. People just had the gun in his hand, but they didn't have him, you know, shouldering it properly. Uh, he can do that. It's not like it's impossible for you to make him do that. So, um, you know, posing him is pretty nice. He's not difficult to pose. Um, I like the details on the gun, too. The gun is actually not bad. I'm not really, I know I'm not really going up all on the, the, the gun itself, but you can see from here, it's a ton of good details on it. It looks futuristic. It doesn't look like any gun that I notice on the market. Someone will make up something and say it does look like it, but to me it doesn't. Um, the pistol pistol looks very nice and futuristic the holster is cool it's kind of like a uh, six shooter holster which is nice it's real old school and it's kind of weird how he's got an old school holster but a new school gun um, like a gun that doesn't even exist no one no one has ever used that gun before um, I know it's come with somebody in this in the Marvel Legends line I mean I just I don't know because I don't care anymore about that kind of shit I know in my collection he's the only one that has it so, you know, it's new to me. <laughs> That's all that matters. But uh, very cool coloring, this weird silverish, greenish color. Um, the detail is nice. It, it just, it works. I don't see any issues with, you know, posing him and utilizing that gun. So props to them for that. You know, it's another win for them. If there were any criticisms I was going to have for... Uh, this whole, uh, you know, uh, for Forge and for Bishop and for, you know, uh, any of the others. It's just a lack of effect parts. You know, uh, Forge makes stuff. So you would expect Forge to have more uh, fancy, uh, you know, tech parts and stuff. You know, modular tech parts. You would expect Bishop to have glowy hand parts. You know what I mean? So that you could simulate his uh, absorb and reflect powers. Maybe one hand is one color and the other hand is another. Or maybe they're just glowy parts that you can put on his body to look like he's absorbing. And that's just me asking for a little more than what we've gotten. But I mean, it's stuff we shouldn't actually have to ask for at all. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Gambit next because Gambit, I uh, managed to find him in the wild and I was actually really surprised because I normally don't find this shit. At least not as of recent you know and i really dig what they've done here and i have to do the comparison with him because you know i've i i only not too long ago got the other uh, gambit so um you can see like the colors and everything are pretty vibrant and he really looks the part you know he really feels like cartoon gambit you know cartoon or marvel versus capcom gambit the way his hair all goes to one side you can tell they were playing video games and they thought about it i mean let's be honest the capcom versions of these characters literally are like the personification of the the x-men even better than they appeared in animation so i don't really have any complaints with the look of the figure he finally looks the part um, I want to say he is taller, and I'll do a comparison shortly, but I want to show you his posability because, you know, we talk about, I, and I mentioned how most of the time legends aren't really that posable. This is one of the first legends I've gotten with a trench coat on outside of like Star-Lord that uh, is really posable. 
and they made the trench coat out of decent soft uh i want to say vinyl you know like a vinylish material and it actually allows for you to pose him more naturally um yeah they did that nonsense with the pink uh you know peg and it should have been like black on one side and pink on the other side but that's asking too much of hasbro you know what i mean we by now even though i'm pointing it out because it is a review by now we know hasbro can't be bothered to do things that make sense you know <laughs> that, that that aren't uh quote unquote cost effective that you, you have, if you're gonna get that you're gonna get that with your black series or you're gonna get it with your marvel movie fi figures but you're not gonna get it with your mainline comic book uh marvel figures your marvel legends which kind of sucks but overall it doesn't really hurt and i think that's why they left it that way it doesn't really hurt the look of this figure and it's a dope looking figure i mean uh i was i was impressed because i was expecting him to not be that amazing i was kind of expecting him to be kind of a blah kind of figure because like i said i had only a couple it was about a month five six months ago i got the uh the old school toy biz one it might even have been a little bit more than that maybe a year uh or, or almost a year ago i got the toy biz one which I love it, you know, he's super posable because he's got a soft goods coat, so I can do everything I want to do with him, and then if you take the coat off, he looks just like he did in those early issues of X-Men when he showed up uh, helping out Storm, so um, I dig him, his accessories, man, I, I'll get into the accessories here in a second, they did a really good job with that, um, nothing sucks, you know what I mean, and typically... A lot of these figures, the accessories kind of suck. You know how I mentioned with the other two uh, figures that we looked at, Bishop and Forge, that they're missing things that they should have had. He's not missing anything. You know, he has what he needs to have. I mean, there are things that would have kind of helped, you know, an extra set of cards, um, you know, powered up cards versus the uh, standard cards. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try to be dynamic. <laughs> kinetic card <laughs> kinetic card oh my god he was the bane of my existence sometimes because uh, his style is just so effective um and there's so many people learn you know used him because they love gambit and like his super did so much fucking damage i even fought a dude in, in marvel vs. capcom 2 who picked three gambits i'm like are you serious and when he did his super it just drains your energy even if you block it when they did the triple super, it just drained the fuck out of your energy. Like, you you were just done, you know, decimating the, the, the opposition, which was kind of frustrating, but it was funny to see it. Um, but, yeah, so his, his accessories are pretty simple. It's like he's got a little bit of what you've seen before, and that's this hand right here. If you remember the uh, Marvel Select version, I, I reviewed him years ago. He had a hand like this. Well, he had an effect like this that you put on his open hand. This is a special hand with the effect built in. And as you can see, it looks good. You get him jumping around, it looks like he's throwing those cards. But what I would have done is had one set of, uh, or have it where the, the cards and the uh, motion line are on a kind of like a slide. So you can slide the cards to one end and then keep the motion lines on the other end so you can get the motion of him moving his hand kind of across and then have the cards coming out at the end of the arc because i mean that's how it works but instead you know they did it like this and you know it works you get the point you know what i'm saying but this is what i complain about or what i point out the things that bother me it's just i sat here and i thought about it we saw the other version from uh marvel uh select why didn't they just, you know, copy off of what Marvel Select did? You know, it would have made perfect sense. But, you know, it is what it is, and this is what we have to work with. And, and I like it, you know. I like it for the most part because it's very simple. And I see that simplicity is the name of the game when it comes to these guys. So, compare. Uh, let's compare. I was about to say comparison time. I'm infringing on someone else's uh, little phrase and whatnot, which isn't cool. But... It's time for us to compare him. Before I compare him, I just want to throw out some more information, some more details, little things to talk about, starting with uh, the face. I dig this face. The eyes are the right color. Everything is the right color. Let me get up close so you can see that. 
that head sculpt is just on point. I mean, it looks like Gambit. The only issue is the eyes kind of look far apart. I mean, they're not too far apart. You can only fit one eye in between, which means it's properly spaced. So, you know, just looks a little off. Um, now when you look at that face, it's like, fuck. He looks like a drunk. I mean, like, it just doesn't match. It doesn't really feel like it almost feels like a cosplayer who's trying to look like gambit not a guy who actually looks like gambit you know but anyway let's continue with this uh comparison looking at the uh let's see i don't know where to start man it's crazy it's kind of crazy you know just looking at the color palette you can tell that they you know the the newer one references the old one color palette wise with the exception of the uh, chest um, the chest armor is a little bit different the colors are more like the early 80s version when he was more pink and less uh, magenta on the armor and actually back then his leg armor was also magenta but you can see a difference and on, around the neck you can see a difference too um, yeah, my light is a little bit, uh, there's a shadow being cast from his jacket, but, uh, there's more detail on the Toy Biz one. You can see all the black lines on his neck, whereas the Hasbro one, of course, went the cheap route and did not paint some of the sculpted detail. It's just there. Um, I'm almost convinced that, uh, Hasbro makes figures for customizers so that they can actually sit down and customize, you know, the neck and, you know, the face, neck, and chest. Oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's like there's, there's obvious things that they just ignored, you know. Um, the boot armor is actually colored the right way. Um, the coats, this coat on the new one hangs the right way. The, the old one needed a wire. Which, you know, I wasn't a big fan of before, but it, it needed that. But, uh, I mean, you know, because it's soft goods, it, it stays out of the way. But if you want to pose him a certain way, it's really hard to make the, the, the coat sit where you want it. Whereas the sculpted coat, it does a better job of staying where you want it. But I wanted to get up close with some stills. So you could see the neck again and see what I'm talking about. There's way more paint, way more sculpted detail on the Toy Biz one. And that's kind of par for the course across the line. Anytime they sculpted a figure, they went nuts with the details and such. And, you know, I can't, I can't complain. So you've seen them up close. You can see what the differences are. Um, there's a couple other differences like the uh, staffs. Their staffs are a little different. Um, I still keep coming back to the fact that they should have had a wire in there for the uh, old school one. Um, and, you know, again, all that sculpted detail, it needs to be painted. So, you know, it goes back to that uh, area of woulda, coulda, shoulda. And that's always the case with, you know, the Hasbro versus the, uh, the uh, uh, Toy Biz. But, uh, you know, it just feels like this one one-ups the uh, toy biz in a lot of areas just because they did things in a more uh, I don't know uniformed fashion but let's talk about these staffs the toy biz staff and this might not even be the toy biz staff that might actually be the Marvel select staff because I kept when I sold mine I kept the uh, you know the, the accessories for that gambit as you can see though, the detail on the smaller of the two, which is the select one, is just way more. It's just extensive detail. It looks like an actual staff with little rings that form uh, or serve as the grip for the user. And I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. The other one just is too segmented. And the segments don't, they should be incremental, you know? That would mean that it collapsed. Now I know I'm spending a little bit of time on there, but look closely at that. Look at how big those uh, individual parts are. Usually those segments, usually the segments uh, on a real one, they're, they're more of them because it has to all collapse into one another so it can get super small. This one looks like it's one full thing and then it has the sections, you know? 
usually there would be like a texture on the center portion of the bow um, they didn't do that but you know it worked for me though I'm not I'm not bitching and complaining um, so yeah Gambit is a win but let's talk about Jubilee she's a character we literally have waited years to get the real version of this character and by real of course I mean accurate she looks the part they got the colors correct they got the uh, glove types the boot types I mean this is the overall look of what Jubilee looked like during the 90s like the way we remember her so yeah Shredder doesn't want to stand up in the background so excuse me for moving around with that but uh yeah we got one Jubilee in the past and it was this weird modern take on her where she was bitten by a vampire she was wearing black and she had too much attitude and not enough of the the classic character the, the the vivaciousness that we were used to this one is lacking personality as far as like her face um she doesn't really have an expression that 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 varies from a lot of the other guys i mean gambit's got more personality than she does which is weird because she's a kid um they did give us two heads and as you can see this one is the the classic her blowing bubbles um the glasses are not fixed on that one and i'm going to get into that they did give us a ton of glasses she came with, uh, I want to say, three extra pairs. Um, one is supposed to fit on her head. One is supposed, like, up, not on her eyes. The other one is supposed to fit on her eyes. And they all fit slightly differently. One of them fits really uh, snugly, but it doesn't really stay in place. The other two are a little bit looser. But uh, I like the look of you know of, of this character. I like the way her articulation works. Her hands are cool. I just wish she had both of the uh, up and down or in and out. This those these hands here on her right side. I wish she had two of those so that when you pose her dynamically, it looks right. Because she's not holding a gun, so she doesn't need the one gun hand, the up and down hand, when she has the in and out hand. You know, but it does work when you have her like in poses where she's shooting off her powers, you know? Um, I guess it's better for that. I don't know. I mean, you guys can be the judge. For me, it's like, it's, it's okay. You know, you get up close. I'll be a little bit more dynamic so you can see. But uh, I guess that looks cool, right? It looks a little bit more uh, awesome. What do you think? I think that looks good. You can't see the shortcomings of the figure, uh, you know, when you pose her like that but uh you know i guess it's it's functional it works um now it would have been better if she came with hands that were trans uh translucent kind of like what i mentioned for bishop um because she is the type of character that would be firing things off of her fingers or her hands so they should have given us that or give us explosion explosion uh effect parts because mutant powers are the name of the game with these characters and if you're not going to give us a whole bunch of accessories you know like related accessories give us like she didn't come with a walkman she didn't come with a discman she didn't come with uh you know like a pack of gum she, she just this is it so give us the effect parts now her neck bothers me why is it that the neck I mean the collar covers it but when you get up close you can see all up in her neck it's not flush it doesn't go all the way down to the base of the neck like it's supposed to and the ball peg is up in the head which is lame think of all the other figures that uh, Hasbro has made and that's the only reason why I'm even pointing this out because Hasbro did it correctly in the past and I don't understand why this is a problem right now like why why are they struggling with something that they've always done and here's uh how she compares to other people look at jean's neck no issues there you can see where the neck connects and it's not doing anything right no issues look at that i know her shoulder pad is kind of getting in the way but like i said you can see where the neck goes up into the head but you cannot see the the joint itself you can see where the uh the swivel or it's not even a swivel where the hinge is in the neck but you can't see all up into the peg you know what i mean into her neck so that's a fail there um there's a couple other parts where i'm not really impressed with this figure um in her hips the hips they use the, the leg joints are too small the idea of a ball uh joint 
is that the you sculpt the leg or the arm, whatever the, the body part is, so that it goes over the ball and hides the joint. You just give people kind of a universal range of motion. So she has the range of motion, but you can see the joint, and I don't like that. I don't like it at all. It shouldn't be like that. It's kind of cheap considering, once again, you look in the back, all those people have ball joints and you know, in the legs, and you can't see them, you know? And fans complained about the H joint that DCUC was doing. Fans complain about the, uh, the T joint from back in the day, the classic T joint. And uh, you know what I mean? They're not complaining about something like this. So for me, that's a fail on their part. They should have done better. Does it take away from my enjoyment of this figure? No, because the last time I saw a Jubilee figure was the Toy Biz days. I didn't even look for a Jubilee in recent years. And when they offered her as a freaking uh, collecting connect, I was like, no. Um, but yeah, like I was pointing at uh, Psylocke. Psylocke's a Revel tech and you don't even have that issue with the hips where you see the ball joint. So that's, it's a big fail for me but like i said if you're gonna get these guys for nostalgia and play with them hasbro was banking on that and that's pretty much what i was gonna do so this doesn't stop me from enjoying this figure she's an amazing figure and she looks really good with the rest of the team let's get up real close and look at her face real quick that's a beautiful face she just needs a slight different boost in personality uh there's the glasses moved up and here she is with wolverine her you know the character for whom she's the sidekick here she is with the crew that first meets her in the animated series um she like i said she looks good with the rest of the team she's just a it's it's a decent figure you know it's nothing to wow you know it shouldn't wow anybody if it's wowing you then your standards are way too low but that brings this video to an end she is the last part of all this um i'm happy to finally see my team coming together with at the very least serviceable uh versions of all these characters in action figure form um at first i wasn't thinking this was going to happen and here it is you know and it makes me happy to see that hasbro actually listened i mean i know that it wasn't mostly them listening it's more uh the deal went through and now they have the rights to their own characters and they can use them again. I'm just happy it finally happened and it's being acknowledged in action figure form. Because, I mean, honestly, that's the only part I give a shit about. That and if we get a, a cool movie or two, you know, where they look kind of like this and they're operating the way that the 90s X-Men did operate. You know what I mean? Not the bullshit that we got, you know, what, five movies of? With the with Fox, fuck that stuff. That stuff's garbage. This is where it's at. So all I need now is Archangel, Iceman, Movie Storm, and then a bunch of villains, and I'm good. So all in all, this is uh, a worthy undertaking, and this has been my look at that worthy undertaking. This has been my look at Marvel Legends, Bishop Forge, Gambit, and Jubilee, and a nice little overview of the rest of the figures. With some Marvel Select and Rebel Tech thrown in there for good measure. And uh, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. You guys have been great. Peace outside.